Hello and welcome to Oxford. In this video we are going to be climbing the tower of the church that we see in front of us, St Mary's Church, the University Church, and we will have from the viewing platform a great view of some of Oxford's most iconic buildings and some of the most important locations in this historic university city. So enjoy the climb, I'll do it on your behalf. And here we are already at the first level. So we're just up at kind of the level of the roof of the main body of the church, looking at some of the medieval architecture, but also some of the restorations of the 19th century, which included replacing a lot of medieval carvings and artwork. And um, they did it not just with more with traditional decorations. You can see a donkey up there. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why they have a donkey. There's a donkey and a dragon and a lion and, and various other um, designs as well. Um, and, but you can see the stonework, particularly on this inward facing section of the tower, very, very ancient, built around the year 1270. The tower is the oldest part of the church that survives. Much of the rest of the church has been rebuilt, extended and so on in later centuries, particularly in the 15th century. Uh, it was uh, extended and, and rebuilt. Uh, but the tower uh, remains as it was and, and that's what we're going to be uh, taking a look at. Now we're going to go first up into the bell ringing chamber. So this is where the bells of St Mary's are rung from. And here we have a mural just giving us a teaser of some of the things we're going to be able to see from the viewing platform. Now when we go up there, I'll be going up the medieval spiral staircase where it's not safe to try to climb up there and film. So I will um, jump ahead and, and show you what I climbed up. Um, but we well, then we'll move up to the, the viewing platform um, to, to have a look around. Also in the bell ringing chamber is the Paris clock. Uh, nothing to do with the city. Uh, this was built by Thomas Paris. It was the church's first clock in 1741 with just a minute hand. Our hand added 110 years later. So here we go up the stairs. Oh. Let me get my breath back. That is what the spiral staircase looks like from above. Um, 130 steps in total. But it brings us out to this incredible view over Oxford. And we are looking out here straight away across the Radcliffe Square towards All Souls College. What a beautiful building it is. The towers of All Souls College designed by the great architect follower of Sir Christopher Wren. His name was Nicholas Hawksmoor. Uh, All Souls was founded originally in the 15th century, but most of the construction, the buildings we see today are from the 17th and 18th centuries. Uh, it was named to commemorate the souls of all English soldiers who lost their lives in wars against the French, what became known as the Hundred Years War in the 14th and 15th centuries. And All Souls is not a college where you will find undergraduate students, postgraduate students. It is an elite research institution, home to some of the most eminent academics in their fields in the entire world. It's a beautiful building. Um, Nicholas Hawksmoor, leading architect, had a hand in that one. And there are some leading architects that have played a big role in Oxford more generally. And this most iconic of Oxford buildings is a good example. This was designed by James Gibbs in the Baroque style in the 1740s. It's called the Radcliffe Camera. And the Radcliffe Camera is a reading room, part of Oxford's Bodleian Library designed for sciences and medicine. Now here we have one of many statues that uh, go all the way around the tower. Originally they were from around 1320 but they were in such a bad state that in the 1890s they were lovingly copied and new versions of them installed. It was by a man by the name of George Frampton. 
so it's his statues that we see today and here we let's have another look at the Radcliffe camera shall we this beautiful domed building named after John Radcliffe an eminent doctor and university academic of the city who made a huge bequest to the university and to the city itself and looking beyond it we have a little white tower with a green dome on top uh, another even more eminent architect Sir Christopher Wren designed that it is the top of the Sheldonian theatre which was built for graduation ceremonies and other formal events of the university which had previously for centuries taken place right here in St Mary's Church and looking across we see the trees which are the garden of Exeter College and the chapel roof and spire of Exeter College we can see there too one of 39 constituent colleges originally communities of students that just sort of lived together and studied in Oxford but over time the system became integrated so every student at Oxford now is a member of the university studying their, their chosen subject and they are also a member of one of the colleges where they live where they have most of their meals and their social life revolves around the college generally and they also have an academic tutor responsible for their progress through their studies so we're looking here across all souls college towards the queen's college where we can see the, the tower with the green dome on the top and the little square tower to the left of it just above the trees peeping up there that is the chapel of saint edmund hall known as teddy hall and in the distance we can see a very large modern complex that is the modern hospital of oxford the John Radcliffe Hospital, named after the same man as the Radcliffe Camera that we, we took a look at a couple of minutes ago. Now looking down from St Mary's here, St Mary's faces out onto Radcliffe Square but also onto Oxford's High Street, known universally by local people as The High. And it's this beautiful curved street, um, beautiful street um, with a mixture of academic buildings and commercial buildings along it and at the end of the street by the river is this square tower that we can see which is the college chapel of Magdalen College one of the largest of Oxford's colleges founded in the middle of the 15th century and uh, the high it has a great view from there over the river um, Oxford stands at the confluence of two rivers uh, the Cherwell and the Thames has a fantastic riverside location with extensive gardens and parklands running along the river. I'll take a look at some more of these uh, grotesques and, and gargoyles and very very typical gothic style decorations on, on churches. And we'll move around a little bit further on this through these narrow little passageways and walkways up here on the tower and what we can see here ahead of us is a square tower that is the tower of Merton College Chapel now Merton College is one of the three oldest it was founded in around the 1260s and that college chapel is pretty much contemporary with the church that we are standing on here so more um, Merton College Chapel and St Mary's Church uh, both date back to the late 13th early 14th centuries both were extended and um, added to and improved in subsequent couple of hundred years okay so let's move around looking over the rooftops of central Oxford now towards two more very prominent buildings both part of Oxford's largest college Christ Church uh, the building on the left the tower on the left uh, this is the tower of Christ Church College Chapel which in a unique dual role is also Oxford's Cathedral so it has this strange situation where it's a college chapel but also a cathedral but a, a fantastic building and to the right of it 
the other tower we can see there at the other side of Christ Church is known as Tom Tower it's at the main en entrance to the college and uh, it's named after the bell of Great Tom which is in that tower chiming the hour and that was designed like the Sheldonian Theatre that we saw by Sir Christopher Wren. Now you can see it's really quite uh, narrow here you have to kind of move out of the way, duck into little alcoves is what I've done here and allowing people to walk past uh, and then we can make our way around uh, to the next section uh, of this tower. Looking here across towards Exeter College again, that very distinctive um, spike of the tower of Exeter College Chapel. And another very beautiful church here, along, just along the high street from St Mary's where we're standing. Um, this church was, is no longer a church, it was decommissioned in the 20th century. And then it was acquired by the college next door to it, which is Lincoln College. And that former church now provides an absolutely beautiful setting for the Lincoln College Library. So what a, what a great place to, uh, to study in the library in that former church there and fantastic that they've found a new purpose for, for the church building after it was uh, decommissioned um, as a church. You can see how close Oxford is to the, the lovely countryside, the surrounding hills as well looking out from here, a really beautiful countryside of the Cotswolds and the Chilterns within easy reach. And we're looking out here now across Brazenose College with the flag flying, named after a big brass door knocker at the entrance to the college in medieval times. It stuck out like a big nose, a brazen nose they called it, and that's where the name comes from. And the trees we can see on the, towards the right, that's the gardens of Exeter College looking towards Exeter College Chapel. And, uh, We've here at this point done a full circuit around this beautiful tower of St. Mary's. Had some great views over what is known as the City of Dreaming Spires from the tallest of those spires here at St. Mary's where people could have stood and looked out over Oxford for well over 750 years now, which is pretty amazing. What a great view over to the hills. And I hope you've enjoyed this video, enjoying some of the sights of Oxford from the Tower of St Mary's. And I hope to see you again very, very soon on one of my tours or videos. Thank you very much. Bye for now.